I found Michael Barlow's performance captivating. This is a story well recounted. Yep. The Werribee ball magnet who found his way into the AFL, made the immediate impression, broke his leg, and the long, slow, painful recovery from that. And he was well set and prominent by the last final series. And he has been outstanding throughout oh, this yeah. season. Yep. But to me, he was the best player on the ground, notwithstanding what Sandy Lands did. Uh, and his three goals, the three goals all came at vital moments for Fremantle. And I thought of a man's journey from there to there and the disappointments that he's endured mm. along the way. And you look at a figure like Gary Rowan at the moment who just can't quite, he mm. just, just be patient. The football world will come back to you. He, will... he has limitations, hasn't he, as well, Michael Barlow? Mm. You could beat him in a race. <laughs> you know, he's got limitations. There's a knock on his kicking and so and on all and that. so forth. And yet he's about what you can do, rather than judging a bloke by what he can't do. I've told this story before and I want to tell you again. And I'm going to have a go at soccer and soccer people don't attack me on Twitter. When Michael Bolo snapped his leg, you know what he did? He tried to get up and keep playing the game. How's that for... How, how's that for... It's not mental toughness because the shock of the pain hadn't hit him yet. He thought, oh, it's, it's all right, I'll get up and keep going again. Then he looked down and his leg was flopping like that. Says a lot about a guy who's going to get up and, and just go after the ball straight away. Oh, uh, the match review panel. Uh, this always focused on the events of Simmons Stadium, which, um, you know, had a bit of powder keg about it. It's fizzed in the aftermath. Anxious wait for Trio turned out to be uh, a bunch of clearances and a couple of reprimands. So, Zach See, Dawson you, yeah, was the... Um, here it all is here. You was, called this game, Jim, yeah, right? Yeah, that was never going to amount no. to a suspension. Thank God, though. If he, if he connected, he would have knocked Pods into next week. <laughs> yeah, it would have been. Look at that, bang! <laughs> he, would, he would have missed it. Silly Zach, he's And lucky. then uh, cleared for contact on Stokes as he came running through. That went to investigation. They interviewed Stokes as to what had happened. He said he bumped him. Uh, cleared for a second incident with uh, Podsy Adley, which comes up here in the goal square. In fact, that didn't even go up on the sheet. Nor should it. And then uh, the last one was the bump on Selwood in the final term and how that was going to be assessed. Tell me the difference between that and um, Jack Zebel. Yeah, there's, I've heard a few people raise the Jack Zebel. I guess the difference is Selwood got up. Oh, and, and he, didn't, he didn't bring his, his arm in. Oh, I can't have that as a suspension. No, as well. can I. I couldn't have anything. Much, I couldn't have much of the post-match here. It was a filthy game. You know what I thought it was? I thought it was a tough final and everyone's playing for keeps. So there are the two moments where players were fed <coughs> off the ball and these have both resulted in one week suspensions with guilty pleas that come down <coughs> to reprimands. The first was the end right on Chris Main, yep. which is uh, an intentional act, uh, low impact, and thus it comes mm. back like that. And the second one Look at Mayne. was what happened next when Main went it. for uh, <laughs> Steve Johnson. Someone told me a mistaken identity. I reckon he, re he thought, he thought that. Johnson had yeah. felt him. But uh, seriously, th that's happened a hundred million times in footy. I don't think you should get a week for it. I think it's finals time. And, and the events what happened after the game with Ross Lyon and, and, um, and um, Shane McInnes. <laughs> Add it to the drama of this game of going into states, you know, country ground. I, th I just thought it was terrific. And Ross Lyon should have said, sorry to keep cutting you off, you know what Ross Lyon should have said when he was asked? Yeah, we targeted 22 of them and we won the game and we're going home for a preliminary final. Well, Did you watch year the... after year after year. Yeah. Did you watch the game, Bomber? I was up at the uh, Surf Life Saving Club with a few ferals, uh, <laughs> oh, having yeah. a few beers, watching this, yeah. I still love watching the Cats play, so... But if you love watching the Cats play, I reckon you would have liked watching the Dockers play then. I like watching the Dockers play. They're, they're a good, good team. What have, they got? what have they got this year, you two, that they haven't had before? Oh, I spoke about a couple of weeks ago. I mean, they've still got the ability to score. I mean, we know they can shut down and play great defence, but their intensity and their run. And I don't think many people... Uh, probably the people that watch footy week in, week out have picked up on it, but the general supporter, their midfielders are all six foot three. Yeah. They're all six foot three. And Big can strong run. blokes too, aren't they? Yep. You talk Absolutely. about that every year. Yeah, yeah they do. Uh, so this war of attrition that they go through every week, mm. yeah, they're winning these battles. Yeah, gives them great belief. And you know what they haven't done? They haven't won one. <coughs> so Hawks, Sydney, if it's Geelong, the top four, the top four normally. So that hungers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You shouldn't mm. underrate that. Did you did you listen to Ross Lyon in the post match? Hope you're going to get like that. Get like get that. Narky. Yeah. Get well, I did. I did watch. Yeah, have did watch have it. a look, yeah. and then uh, we'll quiz you no, both about it.
Was there a message before the game you wanted your players to be physical at all times? Or was that... Well, I'm not sure what you're alluding to. Are you talking about Dockers players or Geelong players? Geelong players. We saw a few Geelong players. Well, I think you're out of line because what I saw, I saw some Dockers players go down off the ball. Well, I just think it's a silly question. Okay. We play within the rules. Yeah. Yeah. What's your name? Mine. Yeah. Shane. Shane who? McGinnis. Okay, that's the best question you can come up with after two hours of footy. You're quite brilliant, Shane. Yeah, terrific. I just happen to be the coach of the team. Yeah. So I have behind the goals vision, I have broadcast vision that I replay. Now I saw them. They're incredibly marginal, marginal free kicks, but that's okay they get paid. But to then focus on them is really disappointing in the context hang on. In the context of the effort we've delivered. That, that's why the disappointment. I'm still hang on. I'm still in a bit of shock at the garbage that was thrown up. I can't let it go because it's incredibly disappointing. And I'm not sure what you're alluding to. So I think you've got to look at what you stand for as a journalist, to be frank. Shane? <laughs> you're saying I'm going to turn into that, do you? <laughs> I hope you don't uh, turn into that. No, look, I, I found it a bit disappointing that, um, that the question was asked on such a historic win for Fremantle. Um, and we talk about such a great game, and it was an outstanding game. Um, and it was early in the piece, maybe at the back end of the. Leon, the they're not going to stop asking that one, but mate. At the end no, of the day, no. though, Bomber, I mean, mm. uh, you know, did Ross go overboard? I mean, I'm not here he to judge that. He did. There's no doubt he did. But at the end of the day, I mean, why not talk about some of the brilliance yeah. or the football that the Dockers played from the start? Did they well, you, you tell me, well, when you're going to a press conference, why would you want to talk about some of the good stuff that just happened? Yeah, it's a Did perfectly they... legitimate line of questioning because yeah. if players had been suspended, they'd be missing preliminary finals and have grand finals in jeopardy. Yes, but as Ross said, he sits in the box, he's got behind the goal vision and broadcast vision. He knows exactly what's going on and what's been cleared so, today. So, Leon, he... he's in possession of more information. Why wouldn't he put it over just like you did then? Well, I just think that concentrating on all the negatives, why not concentrate on the positive and then maybe a, you know, a question like that at the back? Because he's the still negative. in game mode, G. Yeah, exactly. He's still, he was still you, in game mode. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's one of the hardest things to do. But he goes first no matter what because he's looking to get out of town. You so. did it with Brad Ottens. Oh, yeah. You, Remember? You, it's going to happen. All of you. Mm, all of you. Mm. I it's, love that. You know why? Because... Footy's a tough game, mm. and if you're going to ask tough questions, you've got to be prepared sometimes to get belted back around the ears. Yeah. That's as simple as that. And that was the kind of day it was. I'm, yeah. I'm glad it drifted into the press, into the post-match. Because it was high stakes, it was high emotion, it was a yeah. tough, physical game of finals football. He was, a, he was up to, wasn't he, Rossi? Yeah. He, oh, he was, yeah, he was, he's going to Geelong. They yeah. told him you're playing at Geelong, so he goes down there a week later. Yeah. They've lost one game in 50, and he walks away with the chocolates. It's a great victory. Mm. Winners, big, are, yeah. winners are grinners, victory. mate. Yep. Now, this is very specific. Was the line of questioning to Ross Lyon fair? Yes, of course. Not the reaction. Oh, of course it was. It was a physical game. Should have asked Brett Chris Scott as well. They did. Good.